I, I want to focus on one guy you mentioned specifically. That's that's Ray Parks. No, he seemed a bit of like a guy that was kind of lost, or you'd say wouldn't or hasn't made the type of impact in the PBS a lot of people expected. He went off to a great start in Blackwater, kind of laid low a bit. Went to your team last season, and I guess he was okay. I mean, late, midway, midway through your through your campaign. And then now he's just a different player, and he's looking really, really great. Uh, I'm wondering, what did he change? What did you do? I mean, how did you get him to kind of transform to be this type of a player for your team? Because he's arguably top guard right now or top wing in, in the PBA today alongside your other guy, our, our Pope. Well, look, we're very, very lucky to have Ray. Um, there's absolutely no uh, reservations I had when we made the trade, even though you know, to me, we gave up a lot on our team. I loved Don Triano. I really liked Tony Semerod. You know, they were hard pieces for us to give up, to get Ray. And uh, it kind of rattled our team a little bit. We were 7-0 and when we made the trade. We really had to make that trade in order, I thought, to build something that would be unique here. Um, you know, I, I'm a big fan of analytics. Um, I constantly watch EuroLeague. Uh, I don't focus on the NBA as much. I kind of believe the NBA game is kind of a little bit of a, a little bit of a stretch for the rest of the world to, to follow just because the athletes there are so good. They're so different. They're so unique uh, and they're so talented. So I kind of tend to take a little bit of more of a European uh, thought on things. And, and obviously I'm very, very close to Tad. So, you know, that, that, that really helps. I have that resource there all the time. And, and a lot of our coaching staff is at Ateneo, Ateneo and they're really, really capable also. Um, but look, to get back to Ray, um, look, man, I just thought he was great. Like the first time I saw him, we played against him. He was at a, he was at a lab. I, I thought he was unique. And, and then when I talked to Jimmy about him, um, I could tell that Jimmy and him had a great relationship. So, you know, I knew it would just take some time to really get through to Ray and, and have a earn my relationship with him and, and build some trust. And over the lockdown, we spoke, if not daily, every second or third day. Um, I really stressed to him that he was 225 pounds. You know, I wanted him to get down to under 200 pounds. Uh, right now, he's right at a 201 pounds. I think that's about right for him. You know, he's 6'4". He's 9% body fat. He's right where he probably wants to be. And he's an athlete. And, you know, the, the questions I had about Ray were absolutely nothing to do with his game. It was, would he buy in and would he actually lose the weight? Because I knew if he did, you know, the sky's the limit, man. I mean, he can play anywhere in the world. And I really believe that because he's unique in how well he passes the ball. I think that's actually his best skill is that he's a willing passer. And if you look at how we play it, you know, a lot of the, the, the hockey assists come from him. Um, you know, he distorts the defense just as much as Jason Castro does. So, we kind of have two guys now that can do that. So when Jason's out of the game, I can play through him. So, you know, it, it's a real, real unique novelty to have. Um, and the fact he's so coachable, he's just the total opposite of what people think. He's a great kid. He wants to learn. He's got no ego. And kind of over here in the Philippines, I've noticed that, you know, the really talented kids are the ones that get hit the hardest, right? So, so, you know, I had a real affinity straight away to him. You know, I noticed his talent and I noticed his ability and I just wanted to help him, you know, generate that, you know, uh, you know, keeping in mind that he's got a huge view of playing in 2023 for Gilas. He really wants to show himself for that. And, you know, and, and I think he can be a great player for Gilas. You know, he has a true position internationally. He's a two guard. So, you know, he's got the size to play that position. So, you know, I think he can go down as one of the great, great players in the Philippines to ever play here. I think he's really that good. So, you know, it's just the start. You know, obviously he's got to stay healthy and continue to do the work. But to me, there's no questions about him, his character, his personality, man. He's fit right in with the team. He gets on great with everybody. So, you know, pretty much all the things you've heard about him are the total opposite. Um, I knew the last conference was going to be rough on him because he came in and didn't have any idea what we were doing. But, you know, we didn't lose because of him against Morelco. We lost against Morelco because they beat us, right? That's why we lost. So, you know, it was on us to do the work, come back and get that opportunity in the playoffs and hopefully get to the finals and go one step better, right? So, no, huge, huge, uh, you know, hugely proud of Ray for doing the work and, and getting in the games and really playing like a complete player, right? Well, that's a lot of high praise for Ray Parks. Warning on coach Paulo Layub for delaying the game. Technical foul on coach Anton Altamirano for resentment to a call. Coach Charles Chu out of the playing courts. Coaches unfiltered. No reps, no techs.